What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kinotika. Today we're talking about the brand new Sigma 24-70 f2.8 with optical image stabilization. Sigma has been killing it with their entire art range of lenses. The 24-70 f2.8 with optical image stabilization is a very welcome addition to that lineup. Now, if you're not aware, this lens is a full frame lens, but of course you can use it on crop sensor cameras, but you really get the benefit of using this lens on a full frame body. 24 to 70 is kind of the industry standard of lens zooms because you get wide angle all the way to a short telephoto zoom. Because this is a constant f2.8 on a full frame body, we can actually get some really nice bokeh at that aperture. And with the optical image stabilization, you can actually shoot at pretty slow shutter speeds. Not to mention you get that extra smoothness for video if you're a video shooter. So let's take a look at some of the pictures that I took using this lens that I just received from Sigma. It's big, it's chunky. You know we like it chunky here. Let's take a look. First off, we went to Opryland where we normally go when the weather's bad, it was raining today. This first shot was shot at 24 millimeters. I wanted to show off the wide angle and then the telephoto. This first scene here was shot at f5.6, wide angle. As you can see, I was focusing on the people here on the bridge and it's honestly a little soft. So let's move on to the zoomed in version of this. I didn't move my body at all. I just zoomed in on the lens. I wanted to show off that bokeh, see what the telephoto end of this lens looks like. And as you can see, the bokeh looks great. There's some great ovals with the lighting, the bokeh looks nice. If I zoom in on the actual plant here, you can see it's really sharp. I was actually shooting at f2.8 at a 60th of a second, and this was at 70 millimeters. So in this particular scenario, I'm seeing that zooming in a little bit helps. So that's number one, let's move on. Uh, I wanted to, to see if, uh, I actually wanted to see if we could do selfie with this. So I actually did take a selfie with me and Connor here. As you can see, it actually did focus pretty good. So yeah, that's at a 60th of a second. There's a little bit of motion blur going on there. Um, you know, I was hand holding it. It doesn't look super sharp, but hey, that's kind of fun. 24 millimeters on full frame is wide enough for selfie mode. So if you are a vlogger shooting on a full frame camera, I guess you could use this lens. It'd be very heavy, but sure, you could if you wanted to. Uh, again, 70 millimeters, you can see some heavy vignetting in the corners here for sure. The corners are very soft. Um, the people in the middle look good. It's sharp, it's clean. Uh, these are some nice people from Atlanta that we helped them take some pictures of their family. Um, but yeah, I mean, it literally looks like I put vignette on this picture in post. The vignette is so bad, so. Very interesting uh, performance there. Here is a shot at 63 millimeters of Connor. He's always my subject uh, because he's there. So <laughs> the bokeh on this lens is just money. I'm really, really happy with the performance of that. Again, nice bokeh in the background. This is at f2.8, so you can see the full extent of it. It is almost perfect circles. Really, really, really nice. Um, I'm not really seeing any issues with this particular um, shot. And this is shot at 47 millimeters, which is interesting. It's, you know, 50 millimeters. So there's not as much chromatic aberration going on or vignette. It's super sharp all the way through. 50 millimeters might be the sweet spot of this lens. We're finding this out together, by the way. For this shot, I was actually experimenting with high shutter speeds going completely handheld. This is where having optical image stabilization in the lens really comes to play. When you're shooting slower shutter speeds, typically if you don't have IS or in Sigma's case, OS, then your shots turn out pretty blurry. So for this shot, I did the exact same shot twice, once with the OS on and one without it on. As you can see here, the motion in the shot is nice and blurry. We got the water coming down. It looks really nice, really cool. That's why we love slow shutter speeds is to get especially water looking nice. The leaves in this bush here are actually pretty dang sharp. I'm not gonna lie. I was not expecting it to be that sharp. As you can see here in the corners of this rock here, it's a little blurry, but 
for the most part, you could get away with this shot here and nobody would think that you did it handheld. They would think that you used a tripod. Let's compare that to this shot where I took the exact same picture with the OS completely off. And as you can see, the bush is totally gone, completely blurry, no good, no bueno. So the OS for stills is actually pretty dang good. So for this next picture, I was experimenting with the minimum focus distance. This is by no means a macro lens. It has a minimum focus distance of 1.21 feet, but I wanted to just see what I could get. So on the wide end at 24 millimeters, I you know put it as close as I possibly could. I took a picture of this flower here. Again, look at that bokeh, nice and creamy. I really love the color coming off of this lens as well. The contrast, the colors are really nice, I'm not gonna lie. Once you zoom in to 70 millimeters, 1.21 feet isn't too bad anymore. So, I mean, it's definitely workable. So, yeah, that's, that's great. For this sequence of test shots, I wanted to see how each focal length performed all the way through the zoom range. I didn't move my body at all because I wanted to just keep everything exactly the same except for the focal length. If I moved closer and tried to match each shot, you'd see that compression kind of going on and it would look weird when I got close on a wide angle and it would look nice when I zoomed in. So I just stood in the same spot. So every image essentially is the same except for the actual amount that the lens is capturing. Here is a shot of Connor wearing an F shirt. If you know exactly what that F stands for, let us know in the comment section below. Extra bonus points for you if you know what that F is. This first image was shot at 24 millimeters. All of them are shot at F 2.8. Let's take a look at it. So right here, just straight off the bat, let's look at the sharpness of the image. And I'm not gonna lie, his face looks a little soft. His um, shirt, looks pretty good, but um, I, here's the thing. I actually took this whole sequence like multiple times because every time I took a picture, especially on the wide end, I literally thought that it was out of focus every time, every time I would check. And it does look slightly out of focus on the wide end. I pretty much got this lens straight from the factory and this is what I'm getting. It's slightly soft on his face. I do have a 1DX, which came out in 2012. I don't know, take it as it is. Every shot that I've taken at 24 millimeters seems slightly soft. Let's look at the edges. Um, we do have, you know, it's to be expected. Some vignetting, some chromatic aberrations. These are things that all zoom lenses give you. So I don't wanna beat them up too much because the truth is, Every single zoom lens is gonna give you some vignetting and that's what Lightroom is for. That's what the profiles are for. You can just plug those in, fix the vignetting, fix any aberrations in post. So yeah, um, overall the bokeh looks good. Everything for the most part looks good other than slight softness. So this next image was taken at 35 millimeters. Now let's take a look at his face. To me, his face seems to be Again, a little soft. His beard is a little sharp. Eyes are a little soft. I had the focus box. It was one point focus right locked on his eyes. And it's still coming away a little soft. It might be my camera. I don't know. I might be off a hair. But for the most part, everything else other than his face is looking good. Um, in terms of the bokeh at 35 millimeters, it looks nice. Um, let's look at the edges here. A little bit, a little bit less vignetting on the corners at 35 millimeters, which is nice. And when I zoom out, the image looks nice and sharp. Let's compare that to the 24. He totally looks soft to me in the face at 24. And then when I go to 35, it seems sharper. Let's go to 50 next and 50 again. I really feel like that is the sweet spot. That is a sharp, image finally. I'm looking at his face, it's sharp. It did not look that good on the other two lenses, so or the other two focal lengths. So that to me confirms that my camera is not wrong. There might be some adjustment that we need to do with the lens or that's just the lens. 
Um, corners look great. Boca looks great. Boca looks really great actually in this. I'm kind of scanning around here. 50 millimeters, I have said this a lot already. 50 millimeters is the sweet spot, without a doubt. And then finally, 70 millimeters. Of course, the Boca looks really nice at 70. Um, his face is very sharp, just like 50 millimeters. Everything looks in focus. So again, like I've said, it doesn't look like my camera has a problem. I think it's the lens. 70 millimeter, look, let's compare the vignetting here. At 50 millimeters, there is no vignetting for the most part. Like, honestly, none. When I go to 70, there is some vignetting. So, if those things matter to you, you can always fix it in post. Honestly, I don't really mind vignetting, especially for pictures. I typically put an actual vignette in my pictures because it looks nice. So, I mean, obviously you don't want to say that uh, by this lens because it has good vignetting, but. But yeah, that was a really good test here. As you can see, all the way through the range, for the most part, we get great bokeh, great performance. Uh, just on that wider end, it seems to not really nail the focus as well. So that was a really good test using this lens for photos. And I know Sigma kind of markets this for photographers and not really for video, but we went ahead and did a test with this lens for video purposes because I really feel like a lot of videographers are gonna want this lens for that image stabilization, 24 to 70 through the line, 2.8. So we did some tests using this lens on my 1DC. We shot 1080p full frame so that you could see 2.8 on full frame. I wanted to test the image stabilization because a lot of videographers use lenses with IS it really helps us when we're shooting handheld, get those shots, especially if we're not shooting on a camera with IBIS. So let's switch over to Final Cut and I'll show you the video footage. So as you can see here, I'm just hand holding it and it's not too bad on the wide end at 24 millimeters, but it's really when you zoom in on the telephoto end that you see a lot of the shakiness. Honestly, every lens is gonna be shaky on the telephoto end unless you're using a tripod but I will say compared to other lenses that I've used and they've all been from Canon the IS on this lens is not as good as you can see it's kind of jittery I don't I don't really know how to explain that the only reason I'm being a little harsh towards Sigma right now is because I know what's possible with in lens stabilization and I don't want to give them too much of a hard time because I know how challenging this type of technology is. And Canon is designing lenses for both video and stills purposes in mind. So I would say if you are a videographer, go with Canon's IS system. Pretty much all, all the way around, almost all of their lenses with IS are going to perform better than this lens. So unfortunately, that only leaves room for the 24 to 70 f4. IS or the 24 to 105 f4 IS from Canon if you want this similar range. So you're losing a lot of aperture, but you're gaining a better IS. It's kind of a game here. And there are some rumors that Canon is doing a 24 to 70 f2.8 with IS. That rumor's been around for a while. I guarantee you when it comes out, it'll be twice as much as this lens. So again, the price difference is going to be big. But let's keep looking at footage here. We've got another shot here of Connor with the Ronin S with the M50 that was shooting me. And in this particular scenario, I was just standing there kind of swaying back and forth. I'm shooting at 24 millimeters. When you shoot wide with IS, you always get good performance because the wider you shoot, the less movement you see. Um, this shot again is Connor, but zoomed in to about 50 millimeters. I was just manually focusing back and forth. Handheld in this scenario is pretty good. The performance is much better than it was earlier when I was just kind of down low. And I think it's because I had a little bit of room to kind of let my arms lock into themselves. And I literally was holding it better. So for the most part, the IS performance or OS, every manufacturer has a different name for it. I really feel like this lens performs best for stills. If you're a videographer and you really need IS, go with Canon's offerings because you're gonna be much, much more satisfied 
with that new 24 to 105. Kind of unfortunate because this lens is a great price. It's got great bokeh. It's a really nice all-arounder. But for videographers in particular, I would not trust this lens as a workhorse because the IS is kind of jittery. So now let's talk about the build quality of this lens and the specs about it. This lens comes in a variety of mounts. It comes in a Canon EF mount, Nikon F mount, and Sigma's own mount. I do think that they should make one of these in an E mount. Sigma is working on a whole range of E mount lenses. But if you don't want to wait around for that, you can get the Sigma adapter that goes EF to Sony E, and it should work fine. However, I would advise against using this lens on a smaller body because this lens is so big and heavy. It's two and a half pounds almost. It's 2.24 pounds to be exact. To compare that to Canon's 24 to 70, that lens is big and heavy as well but it weighs 1.74 pounds. So obviously there is an advantage here. This lens is a little bit cheaper. It's also got image stabilization. This lens does come with weather sealing, which is a really welcome addition. I haven't really seen that in some of the earlier art series lenses. I used to own the 50 millimeter. I used to own the 18 to 35 art lenses from Sigma. I loved them, they were great, but they didn't have the weather sealing and I really missed out on that. We have that here, which is great. So. This lens will serve you well in the field if you're running around and it's raining, it's dusty, you got weather sealing. You've also got full manual focus here. You can overwrite that at any point. It's completely geared. This is a proper manual lens, unlike a lot of the lenses from Sony or Panasonic or even the STM lenses from Canon. It's great. I'm really happy that Sigma continues to make all of their art lenses mechanical focus lenses. One thing that I did ask Sigma about that I think is kind of odd is the placement of where the focus ring is to the zoom ring. As you can see here, the zoom ring is on the outside and the focus ring is behind the zoom ring. That's a little backwards for most lenses. I asked a lens technician from Sigma and he gave me a direct answer. He said, apparently to put the focus ring in front of the zoom ring would require some crazy physics and would make the lens larger than it needs to be. So they made a compromise there and put it in an awkward spot to make it a little bit more compact. And it is, it is pretty compact. It zooms out pretty big, but honestly, paired to a DSLR like a 5D or a 1DX or in Nikon's case, a D5, it bounces really well. And that's really what this lens is made for. It's made for DSLRs. This setup right here, even though it's heavy, feels balanced. It feels good. I personally, Really like it. You've also got an 82 millimeter filter thread on here. Canon's 24 to 70 2 8 without IS has the same filter thread size. So 82 millimeters on the front, weather sealing, you get a nice lens hood included with it and a little pouch. So that's nice. In terms of price right now, the 24 to 70 2 8 from Sigma is $12.99. And at the moment, the Canon 24 to 70 2 8 is roughly $1,500. Uh, it's on sale right now on B&H, it's normally $1,700. With this, you save some money and you gain that optical image stabilization as well. It might be a sharper lens. We don't have a 24 to 70 from Canon to directly compare it to. Overall, the Sigma 24 to 70 F2A OS art lens is amazing. I know I gave it a hard time on some things with the vignetting and with the video OS performance, but honestly, there's nothing really like this on the market right now with the exception of Tamron's 24-70 f2.8 with IS. Maybe we should do a comparison between the two. Would you guys like to see a comparison of this with the Tamron? And that really does lead to kind of the elephant in the room. Should you buy the Tamron or the Sigma? I haven't mentioned it in this video yet because I wanted to just focus on this lens as a standalone lens, but I think because that lens exists from Tamron, it's hard to just compare this as a standalone lens. Camera Store TV did a really good review comparing the two lenses. I suggest you check that video out if you really are curious about the two. And if we have enough demand for it, maybe we'll rent a Tamron lens and compare it directly to this lens. I for one would go with Sigma because the art line in general is amazing. And if you wanna invest in high quality optics, 
going with an art series lineup of lenses with all their amazing primes to their super fast zooms. There's actually a 24 to 35 F2 full frame lens that Sigma makes. There's some great telephoto options and they keep adding more and more lenses. Because the Sigma lineup is so freaking good and the optics all match all the way through, I would still go with the 24 to 70 from Sigma because of the ecosystem. You compare this lens with some amazing primes, some other fast zooms, and you've got a really great lineup for much, much lower price than the official Canon or Nikon offerings. We're gonna be using this lens on a day-to-day -day basis on this channel a little bit more, probably over the next couple of weeks. We're pretty much gonna use this lens on this camera for 4K video. So keep an eye out for our next couple of videos. I'm excited to use this lens. I know I said it's not the best lens for video, but the OS is good enough. And if you shoot on a tripod or a monopod, like we typically do, you'll be fine. That F 2.8 on a full frame is something special. And I don't want to give up that extra aperture and go to an F 4 lens. With that being said, what do you think of this lens? Do you want one? Do you think we should do a review on the Tamron lens? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you're new here, thank you so much for watching this long, detailed review. Most of our videos are highly entertaining, quick edits, and really fun. So hit that subscribe button. This video was fun though, right? Just a little different. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is a plant. See you next time.